Hi guys, how are you? Hope everyone were having an amazing day. Welcome to AP Online Preparatory Class, hosted by Jendrox Edoc TV. Are you guys ready? All right, let's go. But before we start, let's do this exercise. Are you ready? So let's do it three times. All right, are you ready? Okay. Inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale, exhale. So what did you feel? All right, thank you. For today's video, I am going to talk about respiratory system. Do you know how respiratory organs important to each living organisms and why is that so how air circulates in our lungs we all know that all living things need energy for various activities in order to stay alive isn't it all right so the energy comes from the chemical reaction between food and oxygen so this chemical process of the breakdown of nutrients within cells to obtain energy that is called cellular respiration or internal respiration process. That is why we have what we call the process of respiration or breathing. Now guys, what do you mean by the word respiration? A respiration is a chemical process that used to disintegrate okay, the substances to generate energy in living organisms' cells. All right? So that process is what we call respiration. So let us remember that it is a combined okay, contraction of the diaphragm and your rib muscles. That is why when we do breathing every now and then and at the moment of our lives, right? We keep on inhaling and exhaling every day, right? So that is basically our main energy. Now, the question is, what happens during respiration? How do the lung, the diaphragm, and ribs work together? All right now here is the explanation during respiration since it is a combined contractions of the diaphragm and rib muscles we know that respiratory system provides an area for gas exchange between the blood and the environment it allows acquisition in carbon dioxide elimination so remember guys there are two important elements number one oxygen and two carbon dioxide during the gas exchange in lungs and that is what we call breathing activity or breathing process so there is what we call two important mechanism of human breathing one external respiration and internal respiration that means to say that talking about the word inhalation and exhalation breathing activity all right so this exchange involves inhalation and exhalation what do you mean by that word inhalation taking of air inside allows us to take in oxygen to be used by our body cells while exhalation letting out of air or breath out allows us to get rid of carbon dioxide from our body all right so do you understand that okay thank you next thing that we're going to talk about is the structure of the human respiratory system 
So when we talk about structure, means to say the parts or important organs that we are going to describe, identify, and what are the job of those parts? What are those different structures or organs under human respiratory system? This time, I am going to locate or even label the parts of those important components or organs of human respiratory system. Let us start on the left corner. So first thing, we start from nasal cavity. So inside it. So the entire structure of our nose. So there is what we call a channel there where the air enters. The other one is trachea or trachea so there is a tube going down to your esophagus right then the other one is your intercostal muscle so your chest all right and then down there we have rib and the last part is your left lung all right now we will move to on the right corner of a human respiratory body. The trachea branches composed into two bronchi. Bronchi. One bronchus in singular enters the right lung while the other enters to the left lung. Each bronchus huh, the branches into smaller tube called bronchioles. So, as you can see, there are, uh, it, it looks like a grapes on that. The bronchioles end in millions of tiny air sacs called alveoli, in singular, alveolus. Now, remember, the lungs are made up of alveoli, bronchioles, and blood capillaries. What are those? I'll repeat. Lungs. Our lungs are made up of alveoli, bronchioles, and blood capillaries. The lungs are located in a space called the thoracic cavity. Thoracic cavity. The lungs are protected by rib cage rib cage which consists of ribs and intercostal muscles a sheet of muscles called a diaphragm yeah a diaphragm separates the thoracic cavity from our abdomen a sheet of muscles called once again it's a diaphragm that separates the thoracic cavity from the abdomen all right during the breathing activity the air enters the respiratory system through the nasal cavity all right so it started from the nasal cavity as the air passes the nasal cavity what's next so it is warmed and moistened all right dust is trapped by the hair on the nasal cavity that is why you notice inside your nose there is hair okay so it helps a lot to filter the dust particles outside after the air leaves the nasal cavity it enters to your where okay to the tube going down to your esophagus that is what we call trachea okay trachea or trachea the wall of the trachea contains C-shaped rings of cartilage which give it support and prevent it from collapsing when it enters to your trachea, okay? So, there is a tube or a channel there going down to your esophagus. So, that is where the air enters or flows down. Do you understand? Right, let us continue. Earlier, we talked about breathing mechanism okay so there are two important words that we have to remember number one inhalation 
Number two, exhalation. So this is quite easier for you to remember between the prefix of those words, between inhalation and exhalation process. That breathing mechanism consists of two phases. The taking in of air, that is what we call inhalation. Okay, so what do you call of taking in of air? That's it, inhalation. While letting out of air, what is it? Okay, so that is exhalation. Exhalation. So now you learn two important words about respiration process. Number one, again, inhalation. Two, exhalation. Exhalation. All right. During breathing activity, the lungs expand and return to their normal size to pump air into, in, and out of them. Alright, so you might observe and we can describe clearly how it works and what is normal or usual function of our respiratory organs. Alright guys, let's have a review. Here are some important questions that we need to know. What happens during gas exchange between lung surface and blood? When we breathe in, air is taken into the lungs through the nose, right? Passing through the trachea and finally to our lungs. Each lung contains numerous tiny air sacs called alveoli. So we talked about this earlier. Each of which is surrounded by a capillaries. Gas exchange takes place here between alveoli and the capillaries. Oxygen diffuses across the alveoli into the capillaries and it is transported into the blood back to our heart. So during that gas exchange between blood and the body cells, the heart pumps blood to all body cells. When blood reaches the cells, oxygen diffuses into the cells. Chemical reactions in the cells produce carbon dioxide which diffuses into the blood and it is transported back to the heart. The blood is then pumped out of the heart to the lungs where the gas diffuses from the capillaries into the alveoli. Now, here is the other question. Does respiration occur in all cells and how? Yes, it does. Respiration is carried out in all living cells because they all need energy to stay alive. All right. Next question. Where in human body is oxygen level the highest? All right. Here is the answer. In the alveoli, oxygen from the atmosphere moves into the lungs until it reaches the alveoli where the gas exchange takes place. All right, let's have another question. How does the rib cage move upward or downwards? The contraction and relaxation of muscles of the ribs bring about the movement of the rib cage upward and downwards respectively. Next, can we breathe if the diaphragm stops working and why? Definitely no, cannot. Breathing is brought about because the volume within the chest cavity changes if the diaphragm stops working. There will be no change in the volume within the chest cavity cavity so therefore air will not move into our lungs that's the reason why here is the last question 
Thus, all of the oxygen entering the lungs diffuse into the capillaries and how? No, it does not. All of the air breathed in does not enter the lungs. There is some part of the air that remains in the bronchi, the trachea and the nasal cavity, which we breathe out. This part also moved out along with oxygen. All right? So each lung is packed with numerous alveoli where the gas exchange occurs. So each alveolus is a very thin walled sac surrounded by a capillaries. And that's all. All right, guys, that's all for today. And thank you so much for your attention. Stay home, stay safe. Guys, please don't forget to visit the link of our school website or our Google Classroom there. Don't forget to answer the quizzes. Good luck. Thank you so much.